Hello everyone, Rainspeed here with another Renegade Line video. Um, yeah, I know I've been sort of spamming you with Battlefield Heroes videos for a bit, so I think now is a good time to go back to Renegade Line. Uh, but really, I mean, I haven't made a video on Renegade Line in over a month, and there's still a few things to talk about as we get closer and closer to the Kickstarter campaign. So yeah, um, now I haven't actually done a video with commentary since my last Renegade Line video as well. Um, as in, like, new commentary. Um, I mean, actually, no, it was since another Battlefield Heroes video, but it was still a while ago. Um, but, I mean, yeah, that's sort of uh, two things. I mean, I wanted to get certain uploads out, but, I mean, even if I wanted to make a video um, in you know during the past few weeks, it would have been pretty difficult because I haven't been in the best state. My voice hasn't been that great. I mean, you might notice it in this video, I'm not sure, but... Um, yeah, but I'm. it's obviously um, better now, so I can hopefully get through this commentary um, and it sounds okay. But yeah, to start off, uh, a 3D model uh, of a sniper rifle that was shown as a concept about nine months ago was released, which I think looks pretty nice. Um, it's called the One Winged Angel, and I like how they went with a different shade of brown, since um, it makes the weapon look more appealing than what, than what was presented on the original drawings and stuff like that. Um, it was kind of like a more... You know, n n not this sort of brown. It was, I think, leaning more towards grey or just, just not as light. So, yeah, I prefer this. Now, I did say that this was originally shown nine months ago um, as a drawing. So, to only recently have the 3D model as a news item is a huge amount of time for something like that to get worked on. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can only hope that this was finished a while ago, but it was only shown recently just because there was never, you know, sort of good a good time between certain updates to show it off, like downtime or the other 3D models were prioritized and worked on, you know, and other work went on and this was sort of done later and wasn't prioritized. Um, yeah, and for those of you that didn't know, this sniper will actually only be available for the resident sniper class. So if you really like it, then I guess you know what side you're gonna wanna pick for your sniper in the future. Um, obviously, we know that you can get hero slots as well, you can buy them, but I'm thinking in terms of like a free character, um, choosing that wisely. But um, yeah, now the next bit of news um, is actually the weapon skins, which, you know, I, I already uh, covered them. You know, they were something that I luckily got to cover a few weeks before they were shown officially, but I'm still mentioning them here simply because another skin was presented, which I never got to see when I made my video. Um, like a month ago or something. So yeah, this is the striker RPG skin by made by a player named Moors, and I really like it. Um, I like the color scheme, and the face near the front of the RPG um, reminds me of a certain plane I've seen in a completely different game. Uh, yeah, never mind. Um, but yeah, this one wasn't presented to me, so I guess maybe I was supposed to not see all of them, or this one was accepted a bit after I made my video, um, something like that. But yeah, I did also mention in my coverage of the weapon skins that they were inspired by artists in the community who made posts and suggestions on the forums. And we can actually see here the names of the creators and obviously the names of their skins as well, uh, which is obviously giving credit to those um, whose ideas were picked. And I think um, when these are available for purchase in the store, maybe the skin could say who made it like underneath it. Um, like like it is here, so it comes after the name, so the creator sort of gets another sort of shout out and recognition for their work, so I think that'd be pretty nice. Um, the next thing we have is the new character model for the Wicked's, and this was by far the news post that had the most criticism uh, in a long time, but I can see where people are coming from. So basically the complaints were centered around the fact that the character looks kind of old and also his eyebrows are a bit too big. Now, I agree with those thoughts, um, but um, I think most of these things can actually be a fi can be fixed with uh, customization in game. And I don't think this was uh, the most flattering picture to use anyway, since the character is, you know, he's not only without clothes, but he he's also got no hair. So I think if this was shown with clothing and with hair, he would look a lot better and, and there wouldn't be like a, as many of these comments. Um, and it would be nice if we can obviously adjust the eyebrow size when creating the character or in, um, you know, sort of like a post modification system of sorts later on. Um, and obviously the wrinkles and, and the, all the lines, uh, whatever you want to call them on his face, can you know, could be toned down a bit. That'd be nice. Um, but I also think something as simple as a mask, like a gas mask or like a ski mask 
could be a workaround to the complaints as well. Um, not a fix, obviously, but a workaround since obviously you're covering up what you don't like to see. But yeah, aside from those points, I think he does fit the team he's on since he looks a bit menacing. And obviously the wickets are meant to be the bad guys. So yeah. All right, so moving on to contest related stuff now. And I mentioned a few videos ago about a contest to name the current map that's in the game with the prize being obviously your name got picked for the official map name and obviously an alpha key as well. Um, well, yeah, the winner was finally announced and the name for the map is now going to be called Woodpecker's Valley, which was suggested by Lieutenant Highway. Now, I personally do like the name. I mean, I do think there were some better candidates that had more catchy names and creative names, but this name is still appropriate to the map since it's obviously got, you know, like valley type areas to it. Um, I think I used valley for some of my ideas as well. And there's a lot of trees spread out on the map and wooden buildings and, and the like. So the woodpecker part makes a bit of sense as well. Um, but yeah, I think in the future there could be like an update to the map to have woodpeckers in the trees appearing sometimes. So the map is, you know, sort of even more suitable and appropriate. Uh, the name, sorry, yeah, if this, the name makes more sense. Um, and I'm also hoping for future names for, you know, for other maps to possibly use alliteration, which was what Battleford Heroes did for all of the maps. So basically what it is, is having the same starting letter for both words, like Alpine Assault and stuff like that. Um, I think that was a very unique way to name maps. And I hope to see a few examples of that uh, in Renegade Line as well. But obviously it's not needed for the majority of them. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just a map name that most people won't be taking that seriously. Um, and finally, we have another contest, which is still ongoing right now as I'm making this video, which is the pullover or as I call it, sweater or sweatshirt design contest. So the premise of this contest is to design a pullover for the game. Um, there are actually going to be two winners this time. Um, the previous contest, I mean, to be honest, it could only really have one winner anyway because of the nature of it. But yeah, basically, you have to make a pullover design that's your own work and the developers will pick... Uh, a range of entries they like and those entries will then be put in like a poll sort of similar to the crosshair contest and the entries are going to be voted on by the community and the two with the most votes will be put into the game as a real item to be purchased and worn and the winners will not only get an alpha key but they'll also get their own shirt for free as well um, which is pretty nice now I'm not sure if they get just one or multiple codes uh, you know multiple shirts to give out to others for a contest of their own or for their own or you know more just for their own account for other characters because like i said you can you know get more character slots and stuff um you know the more characters that they might want to make on their account but either way i think this is you know pretty much the most rewarding and interesting contest we've had so far um yeah and the contest is open until early december and yeah a lot of people were curious about this um, they were saying, does this mean that the Kickstarter is going to get delayed or is it going to happen after this contest and all of that? But that has nothing to do with the Kickstarter, by the way. It's um, basically the contest. It just ends when it ends because it gives people enough time to work on their entries because art can take a while. And I'm sure people can agree with me on that, um, you know, especially considering you have to sort of do your own designs and ideas that can take a lot longer than just taking an image that's already on the Internet and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you can also post as many entries as you like, by the way, which is pretty interesting and it might increase your chances of getting picked if you if you have more variety and more stuff uh, for the developers to choose from. But I don't know. Um, we also got to see free pullovers that are already going to be in the game um, it, in some way. So, yeah, we have the duck shirt, which is um, pretty cute. We've got the owl shirt, which would go well with the wicked shoulder pet and... Uh, my favorite, which is the pizza shirt, and I say that because pizza is actually my favorite food. Uh, but yeah, um, nothing was really said about these shirts um, like in detail. I mean, we got to see them and we know that they're finished, but we, we didn't get to know like what sides these are for. So the owl shirt, I mean, I said it, go it would go well with the shoulder pet, but I mean, it could potentially not be for the wickets at all. So you wouldn't actually get to combine those items. Um... And we also don't know how we can get these shirts. So, you know, whether they'll be available for purchase in the store uh, at some point, whether they're going to be like alpha items or if they're Kickstarter donation items. But hopefully time will tell on that and we can find out soon enough. Um, but yeah, um, that was about it, guys. So, um, yeah, hopefully... 
the next time I make a video on the game, it'll be on the Kickstarter in some way. Since, you know, I mean, we're obviously getting closer and closer to the end of the year. Um, but, you know, who knows? that There might be other really big news that isn't related to the Kickstarter that appears for me to make a video on in the meantime. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.